Hi everyone! So for today, we will be working on a solution for problem set 6, which is Mario Less. Do note that this is actually the solution for week 6. So if you're actually working on week 1's Mario Less, please watch my other video linked in the description below. Now, I'm sure we are all very familiar with this problem set that we did earlier during the course. So while I'll still go through the logic of the solution, we will be focusing more on the Python syntax that we need to do. So in this problem set, what we need to do is to print this pyramid as seen in Mario. And to do so, we need to prompt the user for the height, and their input will actually determine the height of our pyramid, and we will print this in hashes as seen on the screen. So what are the parameters of this? The user must key in a positive integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So if the user keys in 3, this is what should appear. Likewise, if height equals to 8, this is what should appear. And if height equals to 2, this is the pyramid that should appear. And if the user keys in a wrong input, that is, anything that is not an integer between 1 and 8 inclusive, the system should keep prompting the user for an input until a valid one is received, and then it will print the pyramid. So before we continue, just want to say thank you to everyone who have liked the video, subscribed to my channel, or even left a comment. I feel really encouraged whenever I see comments and subscriptions to the channel, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you could do that if you haven't already, as this helps to bump up my video to others who might be looking for similar solution as well. Now moving on, what will be the structure of our code? So firstly, the user must be prompted to key in the height that we must validate where it should be an integer between 1 and 8 inclusive. So the system will then need to print the pyramid where the height depends on what the user had keyed in. So let's work on that first. So as mentioned, for this walkthrough, we'll be spending more time comparing the differences between C and Python syntax as we had already covered the solution in C. So if you have not watched that, please refer to the link in the description below. And just one tip for how to navigate all the solution sets that will be working in Python is to actually refer to lecture 6 notes for a helpful compilation of Python syntax. So that really helped me and I believe that you should check it out too if you haven't already. So for this step, what we need to do is to get a user to key in an integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So in C, this is actually what we have worked out where we used a do while loop. So this means that we will keep running the prompt for the user to key in the input as long as the input received is either less than 1 or more than 8. So that means we will keep running the loop as long as the input that we got does not meet our criteria. So what would this look like in Python? So according to the lecture 6 notes, it states that while there is no do while loop in Python, we can actually achieve the same effect using while true. So this is the sample that they give us in the notes, where the parts in blue are what we need to change to suit our Mario solution. So you can see, while true, which means that whatever comes after that will run a perpetual loop until a certain condition is met. So you can see this actually quite similar to the do while loop that we have in C. So while true n equals to get int height, we will prompt the user for height. So in this example given in the notes, as long as height is greater than 0, we use break. So this is to exit the loop if we have met the correct condition that we are looking for. So that is, if the input meets this criteria, we will break and exit this perpetual loop, and then we will move on to the rest of the program below. So what will our condition look like in Python? We will need to exit the loop if the height key in is between 1 and 8. So we can represent that with if n is greater than 0, n, n is less than 9, and then we will break. So what this means is that we will run a perpetual loop, but if the input is indeed greater than 0 and less than 9, we will exit the loop and continue with our program. So let's write our program for this. So what we'll do, we have to import get int from the CS50 library, and then now I'll start my while true condition. So n equals to get int, so this is where we will actually prompt the user to key in the height of the pyramid. And then after that, we'll say, if this condition is met, where n key in is between 1 and 8 inclusive, we will exit this loop. And that's actually that for how to prompt the user to key in the height. Next, we'll need to print the hashes that will make up our pyramid. So for example, if height equals to 5, the pyramid will look like this. So in our walkthrough for week 1, we had discussed how we will need to print this pyramid based on the grid using a nested loop. So we figured out the formula for the system to know when to print blank spaces represented by a dot here for easier visualization, and then when to print hashes. So to do so, we actually went line by line, starting with the first line of the pyramid. So for the first line, where i equals to 0 and j equals to 0, i plus j equals to 0, so we printed a dot. So moving on, when i equals to 1, j equals to 0, i plus j equals to 1, we notice that we also need to print a dot. So likewise for i equals to 2 and 3 and j equals to 0, we printed dots. And we printed a hash only when i equals to 4 and j equals to 0, where i plus j equals to 4. 
So based on this, we actually observe a pattern that will enable us to write a formula that will tell the system when to print dots and when to print hashes. So based on this, we actually observe a pattern that will enable us to write a formula to tell the system when to print dots and when to print hashes. So based on this first line, we notice that to print a hash, it should be when i plus j equals to n minus 1. And then to print dots, it will be when i plus j is less than n minus 1. So going by the next line, the same formula of i plus j is less than n minus 1, we print dots. Then we notice that we print the hashes when i equals to 1 and j equals to 3. And when i equals to 1 and j equals to 4. So now we notice that for the formula, we need to modify a bit where we will actually print hashes when, when i plus j is greater than n minus 1 and when i plus j equals to n minus 1. So we test our formula again in the next row and we can deduce that we will print a dot when i plus j is less than n minus 1, no change to that, and hashes for when i plus j equals or is greater to n minus 1. So recall that this is what we had in C, where we had our nested loop, and then we put in the formula that we had derived. So what will this look like in Python syntax? So according to the lecture 6 notes, it states that we can use the special function, which is called range, to get any number of values, and that range will take in other functions as well. So putting this into use for our case, it will be for i in range 0 and 1. So what does this mean? This is because we will first start from where i goes to 0, hence it's a 0, up to n, which is the height, and we will increase our i value by 1 for every loop. So you can see that's actually quite similar to the nested loop that we have in C. It's just that we're converting it into Python syntax, which thankfully is a little bit more similar to C. Then we will print a space when i plus j is less than n minus 1, and a hash for all other cases. Notice that we have something additional here called end. So this is to specify that nothing should be printed at the end of our string. So I'll demonstrate this later when I put it in Python to show why we need this particular end here. Okay? So before we move on to how it looks like in Python, I would just want to say thanks again and to just remind you if you found the video helpful so far, it would be most helpful for me if you don't mind liking this video and subscribing to the channel. That really greatly helps with the algorithm and YouTube will bump it up higher for others who are looking for this walkthrough as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So now let's move on to put this in Python. So let's start first with our for i in range. So that will be 0, n and 1 as we discussed earlier. Likewise for j. Right, so we'll see when if i plus j is less than n minus 1, we will actually print our blank space. So for this case, I'll not put the end at the back yet because I want to show you what happens if we do not have that. And for other cases, we will print a hash. Right, so we will save this and let me run it. So I will first start with an incorrect input. So let's just try a zero, a string. And now we'll try a correct input, two. And you can see this is not quite the pyramid that we're looking for. So we will deduce that we actually do need to key in the end here. So this will tell the system when to print what on the same line and when to print what on the next line. So let's try this again. Let's save and we'll run it. Right, so likewise, incorrect inputs. And now, see, we have a pyramid very nicely. And again, here you go, a nice pyramid of height where height equals to 8. And yep, there you go. So this is a solution for Mario Less Sentimental, which is for week 6. And I guess it's actually quite nice to see how we've actually progressed along the way, right, where we were actually struggling. <laughs> we were all struggling with C at the start. And for now, we're a little bit more comfortable and we are slowly evolving into learning Python and how to apply it to a past problem that we have solved before. And yep, so I'll see you in the next video where we will move on to the other solutions for this week 6. Thank you!